Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me on another of my wonderful interviews. Today, we're going to be looking at pyramids. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of Egypt and you're thinking of the Great Pyramid and hundreds of thousands of people, the slaves, a lot of them, as we've been told in the history books, although these days maybe it wasn't that way, building these massive pyramids for the pharaohs. But did you know you can have these in your house? Provided you've got a house that is, I don't know how big these um, Egyptian pyramids, maybe we could shrink them down a bit. Well, we do have a gentleman today to tell us about the pyramids and the energy that comes with it. My guest today is Paul Barlow. He is an energy transformation therapist and pyramid builder. And he joins me now to tell me of the power of the pyramids. Hello, Paul. Hi, Richard. So there you are, single-handedly in the uh, middle of the desert somewhere, building <laughs> these pyramids. This is not the, uh, the not. I'm in the wrong place, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not quite that. Uh, it's we've not made quite it more, that. We've, we've made it more simple than that. Fantastic. Now, yeah. I mean, I've got um, just looking around. Actually, I've got some Shungite pyramids. I should have brought one up uh, to the studio, mm. um, dotted around my house because mm -hmm. I'm told that the that it's very good for getting rid of the electrical magnetic frequencies that we're bombarded by Wi-Fi yes. and all yeah. of that. Um, and I but there's right and you, oh, there you go yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. that. Well, thank you for saving my embarrassment by not actually <laughs> having one in the in the studio. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, find out about pyramids and energy, because it's the energy, I guess, that's underneath all of this. But before we do that, what, yeah. tell us a bit about yourself and your background then. OK, um, so there's a, there's a bit of a story to, to how the pyramid, how I came to the pyramids, um, how it all started. It's sort of mm. like, in some ways, it's a long winded story. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting how the path unfolded right. over a period of time so around about when i was 22 um so that's 28 years ago now i was in australia and i was sort of living a pretty normal life normal thinking um and i was out there surfing surfing on a surfing holiday with a friend for nine months um sounds grand <laughs> it was wonderful so we we'd always wanted to go to australia and surf because the the beaches there are fantastic and um we were doing a bit of competition surfing at the time as well in in england so we wanted to go out there for a whole winter and spring and, and get really really good and so that was really our intention we had x amount of money we figured out we'll, we'd, we'd sort of earn as we went around um but inevitably 22 years old we ran out of money and um we kind of went through a period of, of, of difficulty and, and we we sort of just didn't really know how to change what was going you know sort of uh, the situation we, we were mm. a bit stuck and for me personally it, it really affected me because i felt very very stuck and i wanted to make changes and more stuff started coming up to the surface than i realized was there emotional things and I kind of started getting frustrated with my situation um, in that I just didn't know how to create the change I wanted to create in my life. Um, so it wasn't just about this. The surfing was fine, but it was it was more internal stuff. And long story cut short is I, I remember getting really upset and walking out onto to a beach in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, and just screaming at the universe, like wow. with everything I had. Now, logically, that doesn't necessarily make sense that anything's going to change uh, by mm. doing something like that. But I, I really wanted change and I didn't quite know how it was going to happen. So that was just what I felt. And I just kind of released the pressure by by screaming up at the universe and just saying, I want change. And literally the next day, this is a, this is why I love working with the universal energy field. The next day, um, someone had put a flyer on our the windscreen of our camper van which we were traveling and living in and normally ordinarily i'd just pick it up and put it in the bin um but for some reason i had a look at it and it was obviously someone selling something and this is going to sound really cheesy but with the last 20 cents that we had it was literally the last 20 cents um my friend said no no don't phone them we can get a cup of tea each with that 20 cents and i'm like no we've got to phone them. i've got to phone them so anyway, I phoned these people, um, English lady, very, very warm, welcoming voice. And they were in the nutrition in industry. 
Um, so we went, we had a meeting, went to see them. They were selling products. We, we tried the products out, went surfing, used them, actually really liked them. And then we went on to this, like this pathway of personal development. And they, they literally took us under their wing. Um, there was no money to be made out of us. Um, and I had a very, very strong fee, intuitive feeling that I could trust them, which is really important to me. It's, it's, I, I try and operate by trust. Mm. I try to, if I feel it, then I, I will just trust people. They don't have to earn it. Um, and I trusted these people and they, and we went down this pathway of, of personal development and suddenly I started seeing a pathway to change, how I could make changes in myself, how I could better myself and certainly my mindset at the time. And this led to an experience that me and my friend both had at the same time, which is going to may sound a bit, um, a bit out there to some, um, we were walking down surface paradise in Queensland and we'd, we'd been surfing all day and we we're just having a walk. And suddenly we both came up on a real high, uh, not just a high from the sunshine and, you know, and the lifestyle, but like a high that was kept getting higher. There was, there was nothing involved. There was no drinking or, or any, any sort of stimulus of any description. There was just this high that kept building and building and building and building. And it got to such a point, it moved into, into bliss, like pure, unfiltered bliss. And we were both looking at each other like, are you feeling this? And we're, we're both in the same space at the same time. It's very interesting. And so it went to such a degree that if you ever heard of like people describing oneness experiences, mm. um, it was a, it was a oneness experience where my consciousness expanded so much that I could feel every feeling of every person around me wow. in the whole street. There's, there's cars driving by, there's cafes full of people chittering away. There's the waves breaking on the other side of the road. Um, you know, there's a lot going on and I could feel every emotion of every person. I could hear every conversation every word being spoken by every person and yet hear complete silence at the same time. My, my sensory range was so expanded. I just didn't know what to do with it. Um, so I just kind of floated along with that experience. Now this experience went on for eight hours. Wow. This was eight hours nonstop. And me and my friend both experienced this and we both kind of it tapered off after about eight hours and we, we, we didn't sleep. We were just up talking all night um, yeah. because this was seemingly out of nowhere. We talked to our friends that we've met that have been sort of um, helping us and, and guiding us. And, and they'd had many spiritual experiences themselves. So they were quite able to understand what we'd experienced, not maybe the why, but, but mm. the things we were describing. And from that point onwards, there was this stream of experiences that followed. There was psychic experiences we would see things in our mind and they would happen the same day there was telepathic experience we would literally know what the other one was thinking or someone would go by and you'd have a sense of what they're thinking about as they walk past you started to see uh flashes of colors like aura around different people especially someone really focusing on what they were doing um i remember one guy who was a really good surfer who was warming up before going out for a surf. And I could just watched him. I could just see these colors around him, just like literally the energy field. And of course, you know, you then, your mind wants to know what is going mm. on. Um, yeah. Because I didn't understand it. It was wonderful. It wasn't scary. Um, and that, that sort of set me off on a path of, of really needing to understand what was happening. And, from that point onwards, I started drawing pictures. I'd, I'd never really draw, drawn pictures apart from in school. Never had the sort of like um, enthusiasm to, to just draw for any reason. But I needed to draw what I was feeling and experiencing. And I draw mm. a succession of pictures. And funnily enough, now as I look back, I was drawing myself in pyramids. Gosh. Quite a, quite a lot. Uh, most of my pictures had some representation of pyramid or me in a pyramid or pyramid energy sort of like coming through me or something like this. Um, and as I look back, it was, it was only when I was actually sat in one of the pyramids that I now make that I was, I, I kind of was looking at my wall where one of my pictures is and I, I was, I'm looking at myself meditating in a pyramid 
that it kind of like dawned on me like you know many years later like oh kind of felt like this was meant to be yeah like the pyramid was the pyramid energy um was going to find me at some point that's what it felt like when i when i had that realization so the story began with these incredible experiences and then and then a journey of, of meeting teachers mentors who taught me gave me everything they had that they understood and i took all of that and as you do you you mix it with your own thoughts and your own feelings and you come to your own conclusions and you build your own picture mm. and that that's been my sort of spiritual journey ever since um as, as we're all probably doing now very much um with what's happening in the world we're building our pictures of things and so the the, the stargate pyramid is pyramids which is what i make um I saw one on a um, a podcast, uh, uh, an interview, sorry, with the lady called Joanne Dunn. Have you ever heard of Joanne Dunn? She's a Scottish lady who right, is no. quite, quite a pioneer. Um, mm. with, with She's a grid worker. She works with the energy grid. She corrects issues in the energy field, um, in the energy grid around the planet. She's, she's an amazing lady. And I saw her um, doing a talk, sat inside one of these pyramids. And I'm sorry I can't be sat inside one today. Um, the space in this room doesn't allow it, and I, I was like, "Oh, what's that? I need to, I need to know what that is." Um, didn't see a way of finding that out. Anyway, I saw someone else doing an uh, doing a talk on on YouTube. Maybe a week later, uh, there was a lady, mm. lady called JCK, an Australian lady who's a bit of a medium, a bit of a psychic, um, very interesting, um, has very interesting ideas and thoughts. And she was sat in one of these pyramids, and I thought well, that's the same pyramid, just a different color. And right. I needed, I needed to know. And luckily, she put um, some details in uh, below, and a link to the Stargate Pyramid um, website. When, so you, I, when can I just ask? When you say you're sitting inside a pyramid, is it mm -hmm. a pyramid that's like a tent in that you're you're inside solid walls or, no, or it's, frame it's a frame? It's a frame, right? And, okay. And, um, as we as we go through, I can explain why it's not mm. necessarily a tent style, where it's like an enclosed space. Um, yes. The framework is enough, and that's that's been sort of tested to for its um, efficacy, right. and, it, and it still okay. works just just as well. So yeah. it's un unnecessary to be you know encased in the pyramid. I I got my pyramid. I started meditating with it and or inside of it, and I just found that my my manifesting just things were coming to me quicker than ever. Um, things were just showing up. I was thinking things and they were showing up. Uh, so more sort of amplified everything. Amplified is, is exactly the word. And it, it just, and I, and I was going deeper into my meditations and I was just like, this is a really, um, really powerful effect. So I, I emailed the, the guy, Charlie Zees in America. And I said, do you have anyone in England or you know Europe distributing these and making these and he was like no but i'm looking for someone so i said well i'll i'll do it wow and, and and that was that was that he said okay fine fine make make one for me show me that you i'll send you the dimensions and the process mm. make one for me and show me that you can do it um because we we need to make sure the geometry is spot on and that means all the cuts have to be perfect um and that was that so we've we've um I'm the sort of distributor and builder of the of the Stargate pyramids in England and Europe. So you mentioned there that the geometry has got to um, be spot on because I was yeah. what went through my mind about pyramids is that you see, say, Native Americans in um, what we are used to call wigwams. I don't know if they're still called mm -hmm. wigwams or that mm -hmm. sort of thing, which is kind of pyramidal shape. And I wondered if yeah. those sort of things were giving them uh energy or absolutely yeah that sort of thing yeah. there but the, the, there's but... no it's no accident that they built them at the at the angles they did right that's um, fascinating it's quite it's quite as you as you look around the world and you look through all the cultures you find pyramids everywhere mm. uh, way way more than we've been shown right and there's different slant angles to different pyramids um and within some of the pyramids you have um, structures inside those pyramids with more of the geometry that we're working with here, which specifically is 76.345 degrees. 
Gosh, that's very precise. And it is very precise. And as you as you look into nature, you will see this geometry everywhere, from a snail shell to the the above. If you look at, um, at a storm and you look at a storm from above, from a satellite view, you will see that same geometry as you see on a snail shell. Right. The way the, the circles go out, the, the, the actual... Um, the spiral, as it were. The spiral, the spiral is uh, the way the spiral unfolds. Um, what else is there? There's um, ammonites. You know, you get the ammonites. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. we, went, we went fossil hunting last uh, last summer in um, Dorset, and we found ammonites, same geometry. Um, the tail of a, of a seahorse, same geometry. This geometry is found in so many places. Um, inside wave, when a wave curls over, you get the similar ge geometry oh, as well. Right. So it seems to be something that's very, it's naturally occurring in nature. Um, and some very, very clever scientists from Russia in the 70s decided to, they had a, a big budget after the Cold War, and they had a, a big budget to explore um, different things. They chose pyramids. They had, they had complete free run to kind of learn something useful, right? Massive budget. And they started building these pyramids at 76.345 degrees. And they started doing experiments in the pyramids. And then they started putting all their research together, um, collating all that research over a period of 10 or 20, possibly more years. And they, they, as they started getting the results and they, they retested and retested as you do in science to just see if, you know, the theory, you can do the same thing again and get the same result. They kept getting yeah. the same results. And some of it may seem a little bit um, far-fetched it, it really might um, but these are bona fide scientists who who had printed numerous papers in scientific journals beforehand now working with the pyramid energy and they were finding that one of the, ma the major studies that they did was with children that were premature babies that had been a basically minimal chances of survival because they were so premature and they started to um intravenously give these babies water that have been stored in the pyramid for a number of weeks. And I think the the survival rate in the babies was 99.9%. .9%. It was it was as near 100% as you can get. Whereas they were most of the babies were given a, a 20, 30% chance of living. But these are hundreds of babies. Hmm. So there so was something the, going on with a, what structuring it in the some way. Stru the structure, the, 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 the actual geometry was affecting what was inside of the pyramid. Right. Other, other results, like they put really, I mean, some of these structures were huge. They were like 144 feet high. Wow. They're absolutely massive. And they're still standing in the sort of rural areas of, of uh, Russian countryside now. They found other things like they put well, uh, these, these pyramids over wells that were contaminated. And within a, a short period of time, the water would be pure, gosh, clean from toxic to clean. So they found that generally that the anything inside the pyramid that was toxic would become would be neutralized. Anything um, else that was in there would become enhanced. Um, they so, found, found that. Steam, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it just yeah. strikes me that uh, this sort of knowledge would be quite useful for a lot of the water treatment companies up and down, the, yeah, you know, to, yeah. to build a pyramid over all of that. Yeah, exactly. Save them a hell of a lot of work. Yes. Yeah. I guess then you, as you introduce that idea to, you know, on mass, someone's going to lose out profit wise, well, I guess. That's true. Although <laughs> you know, people might actually get clean water delivered to their door. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah rather than uh, whatever dubious stuff is already in it. But sorry, I cut yeah. you off. Um, no, so on that but it just it just suddenly struck me you know there's yeah. there's clearly applications for this and i wonder yeah. why people aren't you but as you say vested interests and in all of that yeah there and there were many many effects there were, there were so many effects i mean i was convinced pretty early on as i looked through the research charlie he, he sort of like showed me directed me to the research itself and i had a look for myself you know a lot of it mm. is very dry you know um scientific data um, as you as you read through it and look through it, um, you you come to your own conclusions about it. You get a feel for it, right? Like you do with anything. And I just felt there's some there really is something in this. And, and I already experienced my own 
and mm. was experiencing my own effects meditating in the pyramid so so as charlie did this he looked through the research he studied it charlie's got a pretty scientific brain um he's a smart guy and he he said well why can't we have something that we can all sit in personally that mm. we can charge ourselves up in um or something that can benefit us personally so he created the the dimensions and the, and the materials which is based on what they used in the russian experiments and he created stargate pyramids so these are six foot to seven foot pyramids which you can literally sit inside in a meditation position or the larger pyramids you can sit in a chair inside the pyramid if if you know if that's more comfortable for you mm, sounds um, lovely yeah so so you know he he often when we're on calls we have a, a a board meeting every month and he will often be in his pyramid sat at his desk in a chair right and he, he does most of his interviews and most of his zoom calls in his chair in his pyramid um, and he can talk for hours and hours and hours and hours and i, and I think he's he, energized yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah gosh Very and you energized. said it, it's certain materials is does that make yeah. a big difference you can't just sort of lop off branches of a tree say and and no and build something no the the, the original research they used um pvc pipes and right. they used fiberglass sheeting for the for the outside um to enclose it from yeah. the elements Obviously, when you have one indoors, you don't need that. You, the frame is just enough. And they've, they've done testing on that just to see what the energy field is around the pyramid. And they found it makes no difference whether they put, you know, the sheeting around the outside or just have the frame because the geometry is there anyway. Mm. Um, and, and really, you know, it's like anything, isn't it? You, you, you read things and you, 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 you collect your own experiences and you collect stories. And I've listened to the people that have, have have bought a pyramid and have started using them and, and and the feedback and and nearly always people are like thrilled they're thrilled with what's happening in their meditation uh, how much deeper they're getting the insights they're getting i have a friend who bought one and he just suddenly wrote a book out of nowhere he wrote a book about his life story and um and he he to get each piece of the book he sat in the pyramid for half an hour right. and waited for it to come into his head and he, he said every time he tried that outside the pyramid, it, it wasn't coming very, very clearly and easily. When he was mm. sat in the pyramid, it was just flowing through him. Um, and he and he did that all the way through to the completion of that book. Um, so lots of amazing experiences people have reported back. Um, it's not like it's going to do everything for you. It's not a magic no. wand. Right. But it, it's, it's, it's a way of um, creating a better environment. And clarity time. seems to be a, a, yeah. a something that that comes from it. Yeah, it's a way. Yeah, but you, you're creating an environment that is conducive to meditation, to clarity of thought, to if you want to tune into the universe. You know, right. what do I need to do next? What do I do with this issue? How do I move mm. forward from here? You can ask those questions in that sort of charged environment, and it seems like it's it's easier to access and have connection to the field of energy that you live in. So, so tell us a bit more about the energy then, because uh, you, mm. your title here I've got is Energy mm. Transformation Therapist. So yeah. ha, 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 what energy are you getting? How and how does that work? And and just before that, the question yeah. that I wanted to know is, why Stargate Pyramid? Where, where does that name come from? So that was Charlie's idea. That, right. That, oh, okay. That, that was his inspiration. It's, to call it's it not a specific pyramid. type or anything. It's no, just, it, that's, no, that's what he called them. Um, right. Oh, okay. So, uh, so, so tell us about the energy then, and and how you perceive that, and, and all about that. Yeah. Can I just shut the door, please? My of course, you can. My dog's opened the door. He wanted to. Have oh, to see good old dog. On. Well, yeah. So I'm just wondering, whilst you do that, whether I need to, um, whether I need to build a, a pyramid in here. Which would be quite nice, you know. Yes. Pyramid, sit inside the pyramid, and and then open the door. Well, there wouldn't be doors, I suppose, because it's a frame. But uh, I'm always looking for the the drama. Mm. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. So energy. Okay. So I think as as most of us understand now that we live in a field of energy mm. or consciousness. So mm. it's not just an empty field of energy. It's an intelligent field of energy. Call it what you will. Yeah, many people have different descriptions for that. The sort of Native American Indians call it the Great Spirit. 
um, call it what you will, quantum science calls it the field, uh, zero point field, uh, lots of different names for the same thing. But essentially, it's, a, it's a, a field of energy that contains all possibility. And from that field of energy that contains all possibility comes the manifest world. So energy exists before matter. Mm. Therefore, we are predominantly energy and not matter. Yet we are very identified with the matter. We are very preoccupied with the matter sometimes. Especially, yeah, when very. Not, especially when it's not working very well. Yes. Um, yet we are essentially, we are 99.99% energy. Now, we've been taught through all our conditioning that we are matter. We are finite beings with a, a big, uh, you know, we're, we're born, we have a duration and we have an end and that's it. Which is not very enchanting it's not an enchanting view but that is the materialistic view of the world yes we are we are energy that is eternal and the the body itself the physical aspect is shed off at some point um my shaman friend in, in america calls calls the body the meat suit um which is quite a graphic sort of uh description yes it's, I, i've heard that before and is <laughs> yeah, I, I when you think of that i just think of like a, a meat hanging in the uh, butcher yeah, shop and i'm yeah. just sort of wearing so this it's, it's, it's the it's the vehicle in which our consciousness travels yes in, in the in the material plane mm. and you know a materialist would uh, would argue no 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 we're just material there's, there's no there's no evidence for for, con for consciousness It's just generated by the brain but there's nowhere in the brain that they can find that it generates consciousness consciousness works through the receptacle of the brain mm. they're, they're looking in the wrong direction um and this is my this is my theory right on on energy and matter so if we were just matter right and you take all your individual cells they're all separate from each other right yeah, uh, if we live in a, in in the you know we have gravity in the material plane, so how are all our cells staying in a cohesive shape against the force of gravity? What's holding yeah, them that, together? Y yeah, you'd imagine we'd all just be flapped on the floor in. We should, some... we, should we should just fall fall apart like a like a, a you know a statue of marbles, mm. but we don't. We can move our bodies through space um, and it stays together. So it seems like like the early the sort of early philosophers said there is a there is an, a vital, a vital force, a vital field, like a bl energetic blueprint that sits behind all matter. Mm. That blueprint is really who we are. The, the matter is the is the densest um, manifestation of who we are. It is a. Uh, one level of reflection of who we are so if if who we are is energy then it seems pretty important to be working with energy and with our energetic aspects yes of course we've got to look after the body exercise mm. it feed mm. it and sleep well and, and all these things absolutely and yet if we work on the energetic aspect our conscious through our consciousness um then we can we can affect all sorts of changes and create things that are possibly beyond belief in some ways. Yes. Uh, for, exa for example, um, I, I broke my I broke my um, ankle several years ago playing football um, against sixteen year olds you know, you know, who just run. And I was chasing a sixteen year old and I, I fell and I broke my ankle. Um, you know, some people said you should know better at your age, but I I broke broke my ankle went to the doctors they showed me the x-ray and there's a, a break on the one of the bones and the doctor said well it's going to be six weeks till the bone heals probably another six weeks until it strengthens back up and you can get out exercising again and i went out and i was like no i'm not happy with that i'm not happy with that um idea i'm going to work with my energy here so i'm going to use hypnosis or self-hypnosis i'm going to use visualization and i'm going to see that bone healing itself i'm going to see all the, the you know the tissues around it getting strong again and i just focused for an hour a day every day and i was back playing 11 aside in two and a half weeks 
Wow. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'm not. I'm not special. I'm not a super fast healer traditionally. I'm not any different than anyone else. I just used the process, and I used it every day, and I really felt it, and 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 really charged the energy you know as, as i was doing it you know really like i was back playing mm. back out surfing and, and you know i really could see myself and feel myself doing these things and i just kept picturing it already done it's already healed it's all so i mean be, because you had that experience many many years earlier and you had mm. all that the belief that you knew this was a way of dealing with it yeah ob- obviously made a huge difference too because yeah. you could you had the faith to do that whereas did, perhaps yeah. somebody listening to this who's just broken their ankle and goes oh do you know what <laughs> i'm just going to try this thing where i i just think i guess there's that you've really got to be in tune with knowing this is going to happen you've got to believe it yeah you have to believe it you if you go in with a, a hope that's not a belief right and it, it's almost more of a and as, as you get it's like anything, isn't it? As you gain experience, you it goes beyond belief. It goes more into knowing. Yeah, just, I mean, I suppose know. that's what I was. That's what I was yeah. trying to get to. That people, you know, sometimes people hear these things about manifestation and they mm. go, "Oh, yeah, I'll give that a try for a week," and yeah. then nothing. Ha- and then as a result of that, um, it's like my dad wanted to. Um, he was selling aerials. He made aerials for a living, and he tried uh, one magazine to advertise in. Didn't get any replies on that one magazine. So he said, advertising doesn't work. And he just moved away from it. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. guess it's the same with that, that you try something and then if it doesn't immediately, because we're all very mm-hmm. lazy now. We're mm-hmm. all very, uh, we want instant results. We do, we do. Yeah. And I think we've been, we've been trained to seek instant results. And, and we've been trained to seek instant results outside of ourselves. Right to to give our power away to a pill or yeah. someone else's opinion or um you know we may know exactly what we need to do what path is right for us and yet we'll go and talk to other people and just check with them it's okay yeah rather than actually just with like having permission with, is with that courage. permission yeah, we'll, we'll wait we'll seek permission on the outside mm. and in psychology because i've studied psychology um in psychology it's called that's called external locus of control the center of control it's very often outside of ourselves. And when it's outside of ourselves, we feel quite powerless to make changes. When we move that to an internal locus of control, we go inside and we we check with us with our own intuition, with our own gut, not necessarily the logical aspect. We we listen to the guidance system. I've never known myself to be led in a, in the wrong direction ever from right. following that. It's just having the courage to do it sometimes. And I don't yeah. know if you've ever come across the work of David Hawkins. He's he's no longer around, but he wrote a book called Power Versus Force and some other, other really amazing books. He developed something called the scale of consciousness. Mm. And it's it's he was a uh, kinesiologist and he devised a scale from zero to a thousand. Power versus what was it? I'm just going to power, write it down. Power versus force. It was an force, amazing yeah. book. Highly recommend it as a as a one of the books to read if you if you want to learn, know more about energy mm. and how to how to kind of like use consciousness. And he found that the realm zero to two hundred was all the negative emotions. So he could he could test for that, and he tested thousands and thousands of people, and then collated all of that. Um, so you have your fear and your hatred and envy and jealousy and all those different things. They all calibrated at different numbers under 200. Interestingly, in his scale, 200 to 1,000 was the positive realm of emotion. So the, the positive realm was four times the size of the negative yeah, realm of absolutely. emotion of, of what's possible. You know, in, in Australia, when I was having that oneness experience, I was way up the, up the, um, up the, scale, yeah. up the scale on that particular experience. Um. And he said the crossing point between the negative realm and the positive realm is courage. It's courage. courage. It's having the courage to follow what you know is right for you. Right. Not yeah. what everyone else is doing, not what everyone else is telling you to do. And we can we can go back to the not that I necessarily want to, but we can go back to the COVID period where we were all being told what we have to do and what we should do and what's mm. right and what's and all of this. And if your intuition is telling you is guiding you differently 
is mm. having courage to do it. Um, and that's not always easy because we don't always like standing out. No, but no. It's, it's, it's psychologically uncomfortable. Um, well, so, I mean, certainly at the moment, I would suggest well, that m many of the audience here who've been on, not necessarily thinking in terms of energetic uh, uh, terms, but, uh, you know, they've had courage to stand back and it's been difficult for them. But, you know, they may or may not have taken any medical interventions when it came up or stayed indoors or wore the masks or or, all, or stayed out longer than an hour or whatever it was. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because they just felt, hold on a minute, this is this mm. is blatantly wrong. So, so that sense of courage passes you from the the negative into the positive. Takes you out of the negative realm into the positive realm of emotions. So, Brilliant. if we think about that in terms of internal locus of control, it's it's we're, we're taking back our own power, mm. and you 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 with it comes a, a sense of your own moral code is 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 there as well you you still operate by your own moral code i don't need anyone to tell me not to drop my litter mm, um, exactly I, you know and i i know my moral code you know sort of um guides my behavior because once we understand energy in a, in a greater way you, you you start to understand karma or you can call it karma or you can call mm. it the law of cause and effect as I do certain things, it's going to create certain consequences that will come back to me. Can so you imagine if, if that was taught in schools? Oh. Not I'm suggesting that I'm in favour of schools particularly anyway, but if it mm. was taught in schools early on, so many problems of the world would have disappeared because people would have a moral compass and they would understand cause and effect and karma and all of that. And they will have their own experience of it, which will guide their next action, their yeah. next thought, because they know, oh, if I do that, that's going to come back to me. So, you know, um, my a teacher once explained it to me. She said, we, we create, we have three tools to create our reality. We have our thoughts, we have our, our actions, and we have our words, our language, the stories we tell, the words mm. we say. That could be our, also be our internal narrative. They're the three things we create with. So... As we, as we create everything we think, everything we say, everything we do creates like a, it starts a circle. And it depends on how much energy is in that thought, in that in that word, in that action. It creates a circle, and that circle at some point comes back to you. That's your right. that's your karma. That's your cause yeah. and effect. That's your consequence coming back to you. There's no getting out of it. There's no escaping that circle. It, it's the universe takes care of that it seems in perfect alignment what you put out you know what goes around comes around right we've all heard the sort of yeah traditional uh phrases once you 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 understand that and and operate by that you you're guided by that moral compass um you don't need anyone to remind you basically no you don't you need you don't need a law and the law, you know, an officer of the law to come and tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing. You know, and you know if you if you don't follow, if you if you what you're putting out is going to create, you know, negativity. It, that's coming back. So you just don't do it. To, to, to take me back to your ankle and your mm -hmm. the, the fracture or the broke the break. If you sat in your pyramid, mm. would that have happened even quicker? more intensely repaired or did you do that in the period well, that was before the pyramid i didn't didn't i didn't have the pyramid at the time no um i'm just thinking it, connecting the energy now to yeah, to, to the I, pyramid. I, 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 I couldn't claim that being in the pyramid would heal things faster i think in whilst you're in the pyramid and your consciousness is focused on healing it faster in that environment the mm. environment would enhance what you're putting out in your mind, what you're visualizing, right. what you're what you're creating, as far as an effect. That, yeah. That's my that's my experience in the pyramid. That the work I've done, the pyramid doesn't necessarily do it itself, but it's what you're doing in the pyramid can be. It, like you said earlier, it's, it's the amplification. It's an amplifier, right. ultimately, to what you're doing. So if you're thinking negative thoughts in the pyramid, you're amplifying those thoughts. So, right. So, so don't go in the pyramid if you're feeling yeah, pretty exactly. bad about yourself or anything. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're 
you might want to do a bit of breath work first and just settle, yeah. settle yourself down <laughs> yeah. you know, and kind of like imagine just peeling off you know whatever it is you're carrying before exactly. you go to the pyramid. So if you're pissed um, off with your partner or something, <laughs> oh, bloody hell, you sit in the pyramid with the wrong attitude. Uh, it's not yeah. going to make things better. Yeah. No, that's in, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that I, I mean, that's an extreme sort of that thing. Would be but... a, a general rule of how to, how to use the pyramid. Um, mm. is make sure you're, you're in a conducive state to what you want to create. Go for, it, go for a walk first and, and just let off some steam. And then and then go sit in your pyramid. And, and, yeah. And so tell us about charge yourself. So tell us about the pyramids that you make yourself, mm. because you, you make them and, and you sell them, presumably, because you do. said you're, you're a distributor yeah. for. Um... I, I just, yeah, I distribute them. So um, so I, effectively, I do sell them in England and, and Europe. And um, and uh, what are they fully framed structures that are permanently up, or can you fold them no, away and? They're, they're they're mobile. They're fo foldable. So I have one in my uh, meditation class that I run each week and I have one, I, I just have the base of it and I have the, the upright poles that fit into the base as I can separate the two and store right. them separately. Um, and it takes about a minute to, to put it back up, a minute to take it down. So it's, it's yeah. really, really easy if you need to move it from one room to another or you're, you know, you, want, you just want to relocate it. It's, it's very yeah. easy to do, yeah. So if you're in an average house and you've got, you know, you've got, say, your living room space, whatever, I'm, I'm just thinking about the height. My ceilings, I'm in a Victorian house, so they're, they're yeah. quite high. Um, but I, you know, my son's flats are much lower, say about 10 foot or something. They would fit in to your average mm -hmm. house and yeah. still do, do the job that they need to do if you're yeah, sitting and there. The, and the base of it is not that big because the geometry is 76 degrees. So it's quite, it's quite sort of um, steep angles. Right. So the yeah. base actually is not that big. Um, so it's actually, you can fit it into a corner of a room. I mean, you want to, you know, as a, if, you, if you're a meditator or you, you want to be doing certain type of energy work, breath work or whatever it is, you know, the, the idea is to, to have a space in your home where you can do it on a regular basis. And, yes. and one of the things that we do is we build energy in that space. Right. Um, by that repetition of what we're doing. So I, I, fi I find that because we've got lots of pyramids in the meditation room that I um, run the classes and the energy that just everything we do every every week when we, we do our class, it just layers on top of what we've done before and layers and layers and it builds the energy of the space to the point now we can all go in there no matter what day we've had, um, kids winding us up or whatever, we can just go in and just settle in that space so quickly all of us yeah. we can go from raging to you know deep trance work within 10 15 minutes Gosh, because of, okay. because of what we've created in that space and i think our own meditation space whether we're doing it in a pyramid or the same spot on a pillow every every night um is the same um there's a wonderful book called uh the field by lim taggart it's quite dry in that there's got lots of studies and and um like that but one of the things they found over a long period of time with meditation is to meditate in the same place the effects get greater the more you do it in that same spot does that oh, make that's sense yeah yeah no absolutely i yeah. mean people have their favorite chair or their favorite oh, yeah. Yeah. thing don't they anyway yeah. so presumably it's a similar you know, if you if you've got your favourite chair in front of the telly for whatever reason, or, or in or in the house, you probably have generated a feel. And then when somebody sits in it, it's like oh, yeah. it's like almost a personal mm. invasion, even though you're yeah, on the yeah. other side of the room, yeah. um, which is quite I, I interesting. Know that yeah, I know that. Yeah. Feeling. It's like, hang on, that's my space. Yeah. <laughs> I'll move the chair over here. You can sit in it there, but that's my yeah. space. Now, now you said it. Actually, every member of my meditation group they do sit in the same place every week. Do they? Oh, that's as interesting. Do, as, as do I. It yeah. it's, becomes that you are you you are creating. You know, you are layering that space with energy. And if mm. it's your own, you kind of feel attracted to go back and sit there. Mm. So yeah, it does amplify the effect by by doing it in the same place. So what do you make the pyramids out of? So they're made of PVC piping. Right. Specific grade and actually quite simple construction, really. Yeah. Um, and the be and the base, is that big heavy thing or is it just... No, something? no. So it's quite light. The pyramid itself is quite light. There, mm. there is an option that um, 
Charlie offers and, and he encouraged me to do the same of, of filling the poles because they're hollow, obviously. Oh, right. Filling, okay. filling them with charged crystal um, quartz sand. Wow. So effectively, when you charge the sand, it's called bionization, um, which is basically boiling and freezing the sand three times in a row over a period of three days. Um, as you do that, it, it sort of stimulates the, the sand and it's like permanently charged charge basically you don't have to charge it again you know you hear people putting their mm. crystals out in the moonlight and things like this to charge them up the process actually charges them indefinitely so wow. we, we do this process of bionization and then we fill the, the tubes with um crystal core sand so if you do the, all of you have the options to have just the base or have all the uprights as well if you do all of it you you're basically meditating in a crystal quartz pyramid Gosh. essentially because that's what's yeah. inside the poles. So you, you're you getting like not just the sacred geometry, but also the quartz crystal effect as well. Um, which, you know, I someone asked me the other day, like, oh, what option would you go for? You, you get the lot. You, you get all the you know sand in all the poles because it's going to yes. be the strongest effect, right? Yes. Um, I guess it's down to your budget in the end of the day. Yeah, and... it is. It is, of course. Of course, I understand that. Um, but the geometry itself is enough. So mm. the rest of it is just extras. You don't it's need the I, Yeah, the icing on the cake. Yeah, it's it the icing, icing on the cake. I'm, I'm, I'm always like all in. So, you know, I, I, I've got the, you, you do it, there's um, Charlie and his partner, Lisa, they created other bits that go with it, like a, an, a, a plate that sits about a foot down from the apex. Because right. the energy in the apex of the pyramid is the strongest energy in a pyramid. That and the four corners. That's what the Russian research found. So they've created a plate that sits 12 inches down that you can put water, vitamins, oh, right. and intentions, all sorts of things to amplify um, those effects. So, you, know, you drink a glass of water a day, pyramid water, you put it on the apex and just refill it every day and let it charge in that highest degree of energy in the apex yeah. there. And also capstones, um, which they've made with special holes um, that fit on the top of the pyramid and, again, amplify the, the structure. You, you showed me a capstone before we started yeah. filming, actually, which well, is sitting up there on your shelf. Yeah, it's, a, an unfinished, it's an unfinished one. It's, it's still got to have its sort of clear layer, which which will bring all the colouring out. But you can right, sort of beautiful-looking thing, though. Yeah, they are. I mean, they've, they've got charged crystals and sand. and, and Put it more in front. That's it. Yeah, there we yeah, go. That's it. More manner of things. And my partner creates those in our workshop. Oh, wow. Which she does with very loving energy. She absolutely loves it. And so do they all, come in different colours? Yeah, different colours. You know, because some people like different, you know, I want yeah. a, 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 an orange, you know, like sun glow yeah. or something. Yeah, and we do bespoke ones as well. So if someone wants like a specific type of crystal, specific mm. colouring, we can do that too. Gosh. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, fantastic. So you could put <laughs> things in like like shungite and things that you know that people have perhaps or a, a moonstone or whatever it is that people have a particular mm. um that, that they say is that's my that's my crystal that works for me or yeah, whatever exactly. people yeah, do. Yeah, put it put it in the pyramid, put the 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 platform itself has bionized sand in it so it's all charged. You know, we're 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 looking to amplify it. Did you ever hear of the study um the study where batteries, dead batteries, were put in a pyramid and um, they were put in the apex of the pyramid. And these were in the big Russian pyramids and they recharged. Gosh. So by being in the apex. And they also yeah. found that with blunt razor blades as well. The razor blades actually resharpened. Which, that is amazing. Which my brain just can't, I can't get my head around that. I don't understand. No. I mean, I can possible. kind of get the batteries because it's it, how batteries work is to me quite mystical anyway. Yeah. But a yeah. razor blade, you you know, you can yeah. run your hand and go, well, that's as blunt as anything. And yeah. then the next day, take it, oh, I've sliced my gone. finger off. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the effect they found was only when they put the blade in a, a north to south direction in the apex. When they put it in a east to west direction, it, it didn't do anything. But only right. north and south. So there's there's obviously um, factors with with all of these things that that create a bit like the a bit like the ley lines or the energy lines yeah, that yeah. wrap round. You know, they might yeah. make a if what an amazing to... thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's a lot because the energy realm is is largely unseen. 
we we don't fully we don't understand the effects that well mm. you know obviously the ancient mystics that have written about these things fully understood it and were probably able to see a lot of the energy very much feel feel the energy but see it also and i think right, we're yeah. still in the process of awakening you know the the third eye and, and the and the, the the mechanisms that we need to awaken you know most of the D, dna is still asleep mm. Um, and as a guy called Alex Collier said, you know, as we go forward and raise our consciousness, some of that DNA is going to start waking up. And when it yeah. does, you know, we're, we're going to start seeing a much more of the energy field, understanding the energy field, interacting with the energy field. Right now, we're we're really, really, um, how do I say, I don't want to say dumbed down, but we're we're. We're not, well, we do seem not, to have been dumbed down a bit. Yeah, we're not experiencing yeah. much of the energy field um, unless we are quite intuitive. Um, yes. you know, paying attention to our intuition, listening to our intuition, and and generally managing our stress levels. Um, yes. We're stressed all the time. We're just in the busy brain uh, fight or flight state. And we're, our consciousness is nowhere near access, able to, to open and access. No um the the field of energy but we're, and a, lot, we're a lot of that a lot of that stress is manufactured for us of course it is know, yeah. in, in yeah. terms of having yeah. to work and earn money in yeah, debt yeah. society and slavery all of that in order to sort of not have us yeah. as enlightened as would be to our advantage clearly yeah. i think we would naturally open much more to the energy field if we didn't have those stresses mm. you know and, and, a, and a structure that maintains those stresses I think, I think we all understand that you know you listen, listen to the i don't listen to it but you listen to the news and the tone and the and the and the, and the content i don't yeah. it doesn't seem like it's there to uplift no definitely absolutely mm. i mean and and we know that if they weirdly and i never quite understand this um but if you put good news on, nobody watches. And it's the same with YouTube. I can tell you, if you've got yeah. solutions for people or you've got uh, uh, things that are going to make you happy and engaged in that way, and you, you, you do that on YouTube, for some reason, the views disappear. Everybody wants to know that there's doom and gloom just about to come down, which is why you see many yeah. thumbnails, which which sort of attract people that way, which is a bit a bit sad, really. But I guess you know people. I guess that's the the danger thing. You want to know there's danger if mm. it's genuine. You know, you yeah, want to know yeah. the cyber toothed yeah. tiger is running towards you, <laughs> rather than there's a great. Yeah, you know, okay, I can eat the food anytime. Yeah. But whilst the tiger is running, that's a limited um, yeah. knowledge thing. Where can we find out more about your pyramids and and if people are interested in contacting you and asking the myriad of questions that no doubt they will have. No um, problem at all. Yeah. Yeah, where do we do yeah. you have a web page or a website yeah. something? Yeah. So paulbarlowenergy.com. Oh, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Uh, we worked on that. Yeah. That's always yeah. important. Yeah. Um, so, so on my website I have a shop which you can you can purchase any of the pyramid stuff. Um and also there's a, a pet coaching page so if anyone wants to work do any any personal work on working on their energy field um whether that's plugging up leaks in their energy field or, you know, um, doing more of the things that boost their energy, give them energy. That's the two sort of areas I like to work on is you know, where, right. are you, where are you losing energy? Where are you, you know, uh, hemorrhaging energy? And where are you, how do you gain more energy? How do you change that balance? Mm. Um, because, I, you know, I've done, I've done training in psychology, NLP, hypnosis, all manner of psychological techniques ultimately i like working with the energy field and and trying to like up level the the vibration that we have because when we up level our vibration we attract on a whole different level yes the higher our vibration we're always attracting so if we can get our energy level up our vibration up we attract things that are much more of what we want right yeah fantastic yeah. brilliant well there we are paulbarlowenergy.com Check that out, ladies and gentlemen. Check out the uh, the pyramids. Love to know if anyone buys them. If if people are overseas, not I mean we're in the, the in 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 England um, in, the, in the UK. Um, if people are overseas, can they still get to to ship it out all over yeah. the place? So if if anyone's in England and Europe, um, yeah. then they can come through me to to get any of those products. Um, if they want anything from the US, Canada, that sort of side of things. 
and and probably Australia as well because they haven't got a distributor in Australia yet. Go to StargatePyramids.com, and right. that's where you'll find Charlie's Easter site, and and he will you know he'll service those orders quite happily. Yeah, yeah, and it'll be exactly the same product. It's the yeah. same product. Yeah, it's the same product. But if you're in the UK, then you're yeah. the man. You're the yeah, man. The, the, the shipping costs from the US are extraordinary. Yes, um, they really are, which is why he decided to separate it out. Um, and presumably it comes in a long tube as well or a big something um, so... sort of like a 1.2 meter box oh right oh okay yeah. yeah oh not too bad is it it's not too bad because uh, there's no. different components that fit together it's it's yes. all, all the instructions are there it's, it's easy it's very easy to do fantastic yeah. well and i'm happy uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any questions anyone has um so uh, you know i'm quite happy to give an email if people want to email me um, oh right well I'll, if you give it to me separately i'll put it in yeah. the description if you like yeah fine fine yeah. um and then we can um we can do that and people can check it out all the, the link will be in the description anyway as well mm -hmm. so um but fascinating to learn about energy and about your um your experience you know i'd be interested to see in the comments if other people have had that similar experience that sort mm -hmm. of that bliss as you described it for eight hours i mean have oh. you had that since I've had things that have gone even beyond that. Really? Yeah. And it's, it's, it, some of the experiences can get to a point where they are scary because you cannot imagine what's beyond what you're feeling. And right. then, um, do we have time to share a very quick story? Yeah, go on, go for yeah? it. Okay. So I was people can always, you know, people can always switch off at any time, can't they? So. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I was doing a, a meditation retreat in Germany. It was a week intensive, and it was intense. It was like 12 hours a day of wow. meditation practices and journey work with partners. And I could feel, and it was working with belly energy. Now, belly, belly, belly energy and those chakras in that area, you know, there's, there's lots of things going on in that area, right? Lots of uh, energies um, so when you're playing with that energy, lo a lot of things can come up. Um, and they did for the whole group. Um, so there's like 40 people in the group that week, big, big room, four facilitators, 36 participants. And I could feel through the, through the work we were doing in the week, an energy building and building and building and building. And I didn't know what to do with it because it was getting really strong. Um, I'm not necessarily a, a public person very much. I'm quite, hmm. you know, I like being in my own space. I hang out with friends and, and things like this, but I'm not necessarily, I don't need to be out in public. Um, so this, was quite, do I. this was quite a public <laughs> setting for me. <laughs> quite, quite a public setting being in like a group of 40 people that I didn't know. Yeah. But I could feel this energy building and I was just like, I felt like I needed to release it, but I didn't, I was, I didn't know how. And it built and it built and it built. And and I ended up working with a lady that was just really, really gentle, really kind. And she held the space really well for me. And I was able to kind of just release this energy. It was basically a Kundalini experience. So anyone who's had those experiences. And this energy shot up from the root, from my root chakra, so the, so the base of the spine. And it shot up through my spine and out the top of my head. And the only way I can explain it was like a thousand horses made of electric running through my body constantly. Gosh. It was so overwhelmingly strong and, mm -hmm. and wonderful. I mean, it was beyond bliss. I don't even know what that is. I don't have the word for it. Um, and and it, I was, talk about disclosure, I was, I was basically screaming in, in bliss. I couldn't contain it. I couldn't hold it in my body. It was right. so I was screaming in bliss and this was going on for an hour and were other people doing the same they were all doing their own journeys their so own version how, yeah. how my journey was affecting theirs i don't know yeah. no they wow. were probably so deep in theirs they may not have even noticed but i was having right. this experience and then with that i got a visualization uh, a vision literally came into my mind and i could see a picture of myself standing on foothills and then as i looked around me there was a mountain range that went right up into into clouds and beyond and I realized the experience I was having was just the foothills. And the mountain range was, I'm shiv I'm, I've got shivers going down my spine now as I, as I think about this again. The, 
the mountain range represented how much further there was to go. And wow. that scared that scared me because it, the experience I was having was just beyond explanation. Um, so do you, do you think that the mountain range experience is, is something beyond the physical um, it felt, experience? It felt, it felt like I would have left my body. That's right. what it felt like. It felt like I wouldn't wouldn't have been able to stay in my body. I, I wasn't even aware of where my body started and finished at that point anyway. I felt so expanded into the universe. Yes. Where I would have been halfway up that mountain, say, I, I would have no idea. Gosh. So, so it was scary and yet just wonderful absolutely wonderful um amazing i don't amazing. know why it happened i don't know um it's never well you've been working so hard 12 hours a day blimey you know yeah, that's so, a lot so, you know when you when you work with energy sometimes you, you you can have these experiences where you you have i call them threshold experiences where there's no going back after that mm. when you've had that experience your your sort of um your baseline has changed and I'd certainly encourage people to explore that because then reality changes. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Gosh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I must draw this to a close, but um, it's been fascinating talking to you, Paul. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming on the, on the show. PaulBarlowEnergy.com. Check out the pyramids and all of that. And, of course, check out your energy and, and, and – get your energy levels up and i'm going to be looking at that book that you recommended power versus force power and, versus uh, force yeah. yeah yeah and and the scale and mm. uh, try and get myself up up the scale a lot uh, <laughs> but brilliant stuff really interesting talking to you paul really enjoyed that very much thank yeah, you thank so you much. much yeah um, and uh, lovely audience watching I hope you've enjoyed that do check out the links will be in the description of course I will be back with more monologues and more wonderful and exciting guests but until then unfortunately have to disappear um, so from Paul and I thanks for watching goodbye <laughs>